I'm Promise Fellows. This is Noam. Um, I'm making a quick video on how to create a student. Um, there's some Promise Fellows that Mac was down when I tried to do this as a demo. And for everyone, I could see this being helpful as I prompt baseline to be built. Um, so I'm just starting in the Google site just to you know, overly emphasize that you can find any link um, for everything or everything transparently is here. So if I go to NAC just on the left sidebar, I can click and it will bring me to the NAC database. And then uh, everyone should be able to get in. If you have not been able to log in yet, your password is just is, isn't is set until you set it yourself. And the way you do that is by selecting the forgot link and resetting your password. And you'll get an email to you, the email that you've been using with us um, for you to, to set your own password. Um, but I am going to log in with some fake data. So that way I can show you how to build Sint. Right now, when you log into NEC, it should look like this. Right now, these are all fake people that are building in a fake profile. Um, but just so you know, that everything is housed at the service site, aka if you are serving with another Promise Fellow, um, you will solid see all of each other's students. You can always go in and add a filter and say, hey, um, here's my name, and I just want to see myself. Uh, but for this demo, I'm mostly building a student. So right now, at the very bottom, there is create new student. I'll move this out of the way. You know, add a student. So click add a student, and this is where you're going to enter that very basic um, demographic information um, about each of your students to start. Um, so for this um, student, I'm going to name him Conflict Styles. Um, looking at one of the trainings I'm going to be doing with you all, or I've already done with you all. Um, Mars number is the unique student ID number that ties your records to the state. Um, all of our school partners um, have them. If you're a community partner, you most likely do not. Um, you'll need to ask your supervisor if you don't know where to find this. This is a unique 13 digit number um, that helps us see if a student ultimately did graduate. Um, for this, I'm just gonna say Mars number unknown. Uh, then going into race ethnicity, um, just please use what's in your database. Um, these are basic census level categories. Um, grade, uh, there's two ways to interpret this. Uh, majority of people can very easily do grades just based off of uh, the grade that the school is saying. Um, there are some folks that um, are serving in alternative learning centers or similar populations where grades might be more measured on credit accumulation. Um, so please go with whatever is, is easiest for you. Um, gender is a little bit more inclusive. So, uh, you know, for both gender and race, please feel the ability that as you get to know a student and if they identify differently, that you can go in and uh, change things appropriately to better match that student's identity. Um, for date of birth, um, please feel free to, to tab over to like whatever month and day that that person was born. Um, but you know, rewrite the year. Otherwise, you're going to be clicking a thousand times back in order to get to like the right year by, you know, I don't know clicking a hundred times in order to get to that. Um, so it is probably more easily just to um, find the month and day and then just rewrite the year. And at the bottom, it's going to give you um, a few categories that are optional that your site can choose to disclose. This is not in our data contracts. Majority of our sites share whether or not a student is on some version of an IEP uh, 504 or special ed, um, or if they are an English learner. Um, almost no sites share if, if uh, at the individual level for free or reduced price lunch. And then, you know, case by case, we have um, sites that experience more populations of potentially homeless students or, or students that are concurrently also parents. Um, so check with your supervisor if it's okay to share for all these. Um, you do have to answer, and it's yes, no, say it doesn't disclose or unknown, uh, or unknown. So I'm just going to say no for the two that most likely we do know, and then maybe for your site, you know, site doesn't disclose the rest.
once again, please check with your supervisor. And this is where you're going to submit and, and create the profile for the student. Um, the one thing that is perpetually true about NAC is when you create student, um, this could sit and spin for a while. Um, kind of a hack that I have found to see if like this person is existing yet is actually having two NAC windows up. And this allows me to see if that person has been created yet because sometimes it will spin for a while, but it's actually created that student's profile. Um, so I can easily look at a different NAC tab and assess whether that's, um, if that's the case. Yep, so right now I can see that Conflict Styles has been built. Um, and right now it's still like doing the perpetual spinning. So I'm just going to, um, you know, go to the, go back to students because it's built um, and then just kind of have two tabs going. So that way I can assess my work um, on the off chance that something goofy like that is happening. Um, all right, I'm gonna move my video. So right now, um, after you build a student's demographics and kind of like basic uh, information like grade, gender, age, um, this is where you go in and you'll do the view benchmark slash interventions. Uh, benchmark is our language around um, like quarterly or trimester progress. Uh, so benchmark one is quarter one or trimester one, uh, benchmark two, quarter two, trimester two, et cetera. Um, but this is also where you'll be building baseline and tracking your support time. So right now, this is where you can go in um, and every student, um, if your site discloses the information, needs everything. So S SEI attendance and work completion. There are some exceptions to some of our contracts of which um, we will have reached out with you. So if you feel like uh, that there's something that your site doesn't share, you know, please be in touch with your promise fellow leaders or myself. I'll happily help. Um, but off the bat, uh, to update baseline attendance, aka attendance that comes before your support, most likely um, if you're starting at the beginning of the year, that's coming from last year's data. So you could click in and say, yeah, my baseline period is 2021 last year, or it's 2021 quarter four, um, or potentially even like 21, 22 last month, aka, um, you waited the month of September and there was a student that was really struggling um, or wasn't attending school enough and uh, that this helps build them into your caseload or your focus list. Uh, so right now I'm just going to build somebody based off of last year. Um, and you go in and you just literally say the amount of days that they missed school and the amount of days that they were tardy to school. Um, so you know, this could be a very real reality for many promise fellows of supporting students that you had a student um, that you're supporting and last year they missed 55 days of school. Um, you know, and this can happen for a myriad of reasons. Uh, this reality could be real for everyone in general, but also COVID made things very hard last year. And, you know, then you'll have a quick indicator that says whether somebody qualified or not based off of each one of these things that you do. Um, your school might not track or your site might not track uh, tardy to school. Um, if it does, please use it. If it doesn't, you can leave it blank. Um, for this example, I'm gonna put it in as though um, I'm at a school that does not have tardies. So that's where you would update the baseline. Um, and then when quarter one happens, you know you can update quarter one attendance there. Um, then going down, the next piece is after you've had a chance uh, to make a relationship and give a student SEI, or if your site is doing SEIs, um, you know, site-wide or school-wide, uh, this is where you can go and put that student's pre-SEI. You would just hit the double caret um, over by the pre. And effectively, this is that redundant information or redundant data entry where you are essentially re-entering that survey as though you were that student. Um, I'm just going to speed do this Submit. Um, oftentimes things go pretty quick in NAC. Um, sometimes it might have the perception that it's lagging, which case you can use that double browser trick that I showed you. But 
that loaded pretty quickly. So right now I'm going back to student details. And right now we can see uh, the student's SCI score. Um, you could also see all of this information if you're choosing to use the Google Form version on the Google site um, for SCI um, that I showed during uh, one of our first trainings. Uh, but if not, and you're doing your own system or paper and pencil, this would also show you all the domain averages um, for the student. Um, once again, uh, 100 is the threshold for qualification on the SEI, um, and the highest engagement that you could have in any area is like a four, aka I strongly agreed. Um, and so the higher a domain's number is, that's the more support or better engaged that a young person feels in that area. Um, and the closer it is to one, the less support or less engaged they feel. Um, and then the final baseline piece is work completion. Um, work completion is just an outcome, does not a qualifier, because a promise fellow isn't just a tutor, um, although we all do, um, or many of us do tutoring support. Uh, so this is looking at two classes to show growth as a student is engaging more in school. So uh, your choices here are essentially whether it was last month, um, and right now I'm in a, a quarter profile, um, you know, or last quarter. Uh, so I'm going to build this as though I'm somebody that's at the beginning of the year. So I'm going to be looking at, you know, the month of September. Um, and in the month of September, uh, when I look at the school database or I talk to teachers, um, I can see that there's, you know, two classes that a student is having a harder time with or not engaging as well with. Um, so the work types are going to be like the core required subjects, and there is a, an opportunity to use um, other. Please use it if it is appropriate. But um, I'm going to build somebody that is having a harder time in math. Um, and, you know, you could add the class name if you want. Um, it is not required. And then in that math class, um, you know, in the first month there was, uh, I don't know, 11 assignments, and the student got three of them done. So, you know, right now they got somewhere between 20 and 30% of the work done for September. Um, so work completion is not meant to be like your grade or like your um, oh, kind of like summative knowledge on a subject. It is like the act of engaging in school. So, you know, if you did the assignment as opposed to like what grade you got in the assignment. Um, and I'm going to build the second class and show why uh, the class name could be helpful. You know, you might be supporting a student in two math classes where they are um, actively in geometry and support algebra um, because they struggled in, in algebra last year or something like that. And once again, this is where you'd be able to put in that work completion, aka like the amount of assignments they've completed over um, the period of time. So for this person last month, but this could be also as you're adding people throughout the year, you could be looking at quarter one, trimester one, things like that. And once again, um, as the quarter progresses, this is where you'd be able to, um, you know, update after quarter one, how they're doing. in both classes. All right, finally, the last piece that you'd be doing once you've built out your full baseline um, is adding in uh, your support time. So at the very bottom, there's the weekly log. Um, and in that is where you're updating your support time every week. Uh, so this is where I encourage everyone to not, um, I don't know, zoom in or micromanage their time. So if you are with a group, and supporting them, um, you know, for this person I built in math class, I could see you doing supports for, you know, a group of six students um, with small group support in math class where you're being a push in support. Um, and effectively, you are there for the full 60 minutes. And your goal is to add support to any of those six students that needed it. Um, my guess is you supported some more than others, but you are there as a support for everyone within that cohort. So please don't feel like you have to, like, figure out um, the amount of time that you spent talking to each individual person. This is where you could go in and be like, yep, you know, I started in early September as a person. I started building their baseline, started really supporting them 
you know, after a couple weeks. And so this is where I had 60 minute support um, that week where I am a support in that one class and I was there for the entire time. And so was that young person. Um, and then perpetually throughout the year, this is where you would add your support time. So maybe you also have like a, you join for lunch for like a, um, like a boys mentor group or boys group. Um, and that takes 30 minutes. And for that person, that was the time that you saw them that week, or maybe you saw them for 30 minutes plus the 60 minutes that you had in class. And, um, you know, it was really 90 minutes. Um, effectively, the research is that a young person needs at least 90 days, aka 12 weeks of um, enough support. And for us, that's 30 minutes or more of support to have um, a positive change. And so uh, this is how you show your support through all the investment that you're doing with the young person, then most likely they will have a positive change. Um, the final piece is doing WHOOP goals. Um, you'll learn more about this in 101, but effectively um, after you learn about this, this is where you'd be updating whether you have helped a student create a goal or checked in with them on their goal. And it's quite literally like um, clicking the question mark and saying yes or no if it happened. Um, but you'll learn about that in 101. Um, if you have questions in the meantime, please out reach out to your Promise Fellow leaders or myself, um, we will happily help.